wonder of how you brought deliverance, the exodus of my heart. You found me, you freed me, held back the waters for my beliefs. Oh, Yahweh. Is a sign that you are with me. The fire by night is the guiding light to my feet. You found me, you freed me, held back the waters of my beliefs. Oh, yeah. Sing it out together. You stepped into my Egypt. You stepped into my Egypt. You took me by the hand. You marched me out in freedom into the promised land. Now I will not forget you, God. I'll sing of all you've done. Then this swallowed up forever. You took me by the hand and you marched me out in freedom into the promised land. Now I will not forget you, God. I'll sing of all you've done. Let this swallowed up forever by the fury of your love. You're the God who fights for me. One more time, you step. You stepped into my Egypt. You took me by the hand. You marched me out in freedom into the promised land. Now I will not forget you, God. I'll sing of all you've done. Death this swallowed up forever.
trust in you, God. Oh, I place my trust in you, Jesus, to fight for me in the battles won.
I hide Covered by your wings It's there you fight for me In every battle Every battle Every battle Jesus Every battle strategy that the Lord taught me a long time ago and we are going to have battles in this life I'm a person like I'm a peacemaker I try to keep peace with everybody I don't like for people to be mad at me or upset with me just keep peace and sometimes people just want to fight and come against you and one time I was under an attack like that and I said Lord how do you win a battle? And he spoke clearly to me and he said, choose not to fight. My translation of that is, don't fight it in the natural. Don't rear up and get an entanglement of words. Give that battle to the Lord. He will fight on our behalf. You are going to have battles. If you haven't ever had one, let me warn you now. They're coming, especially in this time we're living in, in our world where Christians can seem like the enemy because we are the enemy of this world. We are the enemy to the enemy's world. But we are empowered by Jesus Christ. He tells us in Ephesians how to fight. You put on that full armor of God. You recognize that you're not wrestling with flesh and blood, but there are powers and principalities, things going on that we can't see with our eyes, and that's what we pray against. We fight in prayer because really we're not even fighting. We're just surrendering to God, and He fights for you. He fights for me. We are covered by the blood of the Lamb. We overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. Fight in the Spirit. Pray for those people who oppose you and come against you. Bless those who curse you. That's what the Bible says, and it works. Doesn't mean we won't have battles, but the Lord has given us instruction in how to win. So how do you win a, by a battle, a fight, Opposition, choose not to fight in the natural, but just surrender yourself to the Lord. Bless those enemies, pray for them. Come against those spiritual assignments against you and just surrender to God and watch him win. Amen. Oh, you have. 
have never failed me yet. Your promise still stands. Great is your faithfulness. Your faithfulness. I'm still in your hands. This is my confidence. You've never failed me yet. Oh, I know the night won't last. Your word will come to pass. My heart will sing your praise again to your worthy oh Jesus you're still enough keep me within your love my heart will sing your praise again let's sing it together your promise your promise still stands. Great is your faithfulness, your faithfulness. I'm still in your hands. This is my confidence. You've never failed me. In ti confiare, tu promesa sigue en pie. Tu eres fiel, confiado andaré, en tus manos estaré, siempre has sido fiel. Never fail me.
Your promise still stands. Great is your faithfulness, faithfulness. I'm still in your hands. This is my confidence. You've never failed. Your promise still stands. Great is your faithfulness. Faithfulness, I'm still in your hands. This is my confidence. You've never failed me. Yeah. Never failed. Father, I pray that in this moment you would just remind us of your faithfulness. Help us not forget, Lord God, the work that you have already accomplished in our lives. No matter how big or small it is, God. Your promise is that you will finish it unto completion. Hold on to that, God. Stand on your word this morning, trusting and believing that you are faithful. Let that lead us, Father, in worship to you. You're so good.
Hallelujah. I don't know. I think somebody needs to be reminded besides me that you need to persevere so that when you've done the will of God, you will receive what he has promised for in just a little while. He who shall come will come and will not delay. And I'll add this. But my righteous one will live by faith and will not draw back. I don't know. I'm not the only one that needed to be reminded. If you're like, reminded of what? Last Sunday's message is still stirring in my spirit. He that shall come will come. That answer that shall come for you will come. That word that shall come will come. That promise shall come. He was a sure thing yesterday. He is still a sure thing today. He that shall come will come for you, my friend. The peace that shall come will come. The joy that shall come will come. The relief, I don't know, somebody just needs some relief today that shall come for you will come. Hallelujah. Maybe in this moment. Thank you, Father. That's why we came here in this room today, not to get blessed, but to bless your name. The psalmist David said over and over, I will bless the Lord. I don't know about you, but I want God to get a blessing today. Because he has a way that when we bless him, he turns around and blesses us back. That's just the way God is. But we bless you, Lord. We bow down before you, Lord. Here and now. Be glorified here and now. We lift you high. Lord, I need relief, but I'm still going to bless your name. I'm still waiting, but I'm still going to bless your name. There's still pain in my body, but I'm still going to bless your name. He still won't speak to me, but I'm still going to bless your name. Hallelujah. It was a sure thing yesterday. It's a sure thing today. He who shall come will come hallelujah 
and you shall receive that that you've cried out to him for. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Here and now, let's, be, let's glorify him right here. And now, come on, lift it up. We lift you high, Lord, right here and now. Brought me back, yes, Lord. I still have the victory. I said, you still have the victory. The victory is yours. The battle is the Lord's, as my wife said earlier. And we don't fight like the whites. Uh, we fight like this. This is warfare, what we're doing right here. Uh, this is warfare, the kind of warfare we fight. We're fighting a good fight in and through and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Ha, ha, thank you, Lord. Ha, shut up, Thank you, Lord. We worship you. We bless you, Lord. Whew, hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't know. Somebody's being relieved of a burden right now. Somebody's being refreshed right now. Somebody, peace is invading that situation. You're, you came in preoccupied. The peace of God that passes all understanding be released to you right now. In the, na ah, in the name of Jesus, Shandarabo Sahai. The peace of God be released to you right now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. <laughs> Mm, thank you, Lord. I think somebody came in here willing to distract Jesus because <laughs> the one that distracted him got their miracle. The one that distracted him got his attention. Shh. Oh, thank you, Lord. There are distractions that are getting your attention this morning, Jesus. Hallelujah. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Jesus. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <clears throat> well, church, the Lord bless you. We're in the presence of the Lord today. And we're going to move from presence to power. Because it takes His power to bring the breakthrough that somebody needs today. We're going to move beyond presence into power. In Jesus' name. Thank you, worship team. Thank you. You can be seated all over the room. God bless you. We welcome you in this service today, whether you are online or on site. We say the Lord richly bless you. I know I've seen a few folks in this service that I didn't recognize that came new today. I want to just ask you if you're in the service here, either online or in the room. Because if you're online as a guest, we acknowledge you as well. But if you're online or in the room today as a guest, would you take your cell phone in your hand and do something real quick for me? We have a simple, quick little electronic registration I would ask you to do if this is your very first Sunday. And you at home, please do the same. I promise you we're not going to start mailing stuff to you. Nobody's going to come knocking on your door or anything like that. It's just important to me because it's that registration that you do is going to come to my personal cell phone. And we can correspond. Any of you that have ever done that, you know what I'm saying is true. You've responded to me. I've responded back to you. We can do that if you'll take just 10, 15 seconds is all it takes. If you're in the room, you probably need to connect to the Wi-Fi. You see the instruction on the screen. If you're at home, well, obviously, or wherever you're watching from, you're already connected. 
So we ask you to just text the word welcome, text the word welcome to 561-232-3992, 561-232-3992 is the number. Your message to me is welcome. I'm going to receive that and I want to be able to respond to you and have the opportunity to do that. So let's, uh, let's give th those, th those that are doing the registration, give you just a couple of more seconds. Before you leave today, those of you that are here as guests, I want, we want to put a gift bag, I forgot to grab that, in your hand that looks like this. Please stop. You saw the Welcome Center coming in. I know you did. Stop in there for just a moment. We want to put this gift bag in your hand as just another token of our appreciation to you and to the Lord. For you, you know, nothing happens by chance. There's no such thing as fate or chance. That's witchcraft. I said that stuff is witchcraft. If you're here today, it's designed by the Lord and divinely appointed that you be in this service. If you're connected online, God ordered you to connect to this today. Don't miss what he has for you. If you're in the room, we just want to put a little gift in your hand. Grab that at our Welcome Center on your way out. Acts 2 Church family, let's let all of our guests know. We are so glad. It's meant to be opened, explored, pursued. It's made to be read, reread, applied, and used. The sword of the Spirit, the Word of God, with wisdom life changing to lead us on. It's made for guidance to teach us His ways, showing what's true, right, and worthy of praise. It's meant to be hidden deep in our hearts, daily examined as the morning starts. No greater glimpse of God do we have, a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. two-part message. If so, that's okay. I don't know. I believe re more recently than ever before, I have found myself being reminded by the Holy Spirit to go back and visit, along with the prophet Ezekiel, the vat bones. Uh, and I don't believe I'm the only one who needs to visit the Valley of Dry Bones. So we're going to go there together as we lay a foundation for this message today, which, which probably is not going to be what you think, but let's just let's get into this together. And we're going to start with our King James moment, our King James moment. Ezekiel chapter 37, starting in verse 14. The hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the Spirit of the Lord, and set me down in the midst of the valley which was full of bones, and caused me to pass by them round about. And behold, there were very many in the open valley, and lo, they were very dry. Verse 3, And he said unto me, Son of man, of course this is God speaking, Can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, thou knowest. In other words, you know what Ezekiel was really saying? I believe Ezekiel was really saying, don't ask me. <laughs> Only you know. You don't want to know what I think. Don't ask me whether they can live or not. You know, there's a very interesting thing about dry bones in the world of archaeology. You know, every time archaeologists discover one dry bone of some ancient being or creature, something that used to be alive, they can take that one bone and come up with an entire being, even if it was human. One facial bone, they can reconstruct a whole face. At least they claim that they can. Maybe somebody in here today, you feel like you have just one dry bone of that dream left. One dry bone of that vision left. You're holding on to just one dry bone of that promise. Well, 
I'm here to tell you today that that is all God needs to bring it back to life. I know some of you are in here and you've even had maybe people counsel you like this. Oh, it's time to get over that. It's time to just let that go now. It's time to move forward. Stop holding on. It's dead and gone. But I hear the Lord saying to us today, even if all you feel you have left is one dry bone, I can work with that to restore life. Now notice that Ezekiel wasn't shown, he wasn't shown a valley of corpses. That really wouldn't have been quite as impossible. He is shown dry, disconnected bones scattered across a valley. And here's another interesting observation. God was not concerned that Ezekiel understand why they were dry and dead. Man, we are so consumed in this age and in this time with trying to explain the dead, dry bones of our lives, trying to define them, trying to go back and visit the history. He, he, God was not concerned at all about how they died, why they died, or when they died. What mattered to God was bringing them back to life. He made no reference to their past, to their history, but only to the glorious future He had planned for them. And look what God says next to Ezekiel, and this is my focus today. And again He said unto me, God speaking, prophesy upon these bones And say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear ye the word of the Lord. The title of today's message is simply this. It's time to prophesy. It's time to prophesy. Stop worrying and start prophesying. Stop crying over your dry bones and start prophesying to them. He said, prophesy, Ezekiel, say to the dry bones, hear ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Now, I want us to look at this word, prophesy. Man, I think this word has become so very mystical almost, even in Pentecostal and charismatic circles, very mystical as to what it means. But I believe this is the hour, this is the day. I know I hear the Holy Spirit saying it's time to bring prophesying back into the Spirit-filled life. It's a big part of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And it shall come to pass, Acts chapter 2 verse 17 says. It shall come to pass... In last day, saith God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. And look at this. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. And your young men shall see visions and your old men shall dream dreams. And on my servants and on my handmaidens, I will pour out in those days of my spirit and they shall prophesy. Pastor Jamil, please do all you can to correct that. If there's anything you can do. Because I know that's getting recorded that way. Excuse me, sorry. Bear with us just one second. We'll get to the bottom of that. Anyway, let me get back where I was. Distract me, I really do. But oh, how they do. Let me read verse 17 again. And it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And on my servants and on my handmaidens, I will pour out of those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. Man, how have we missed that for generations? I don't know. How we read the Acts 2 outpouring account of the birthday of the church, and we as Pentecostals really fixated on tongues... Yeah, come on. We fixated on that experience. And somehow we have not placed equal emphasis upon prophesying. Let me tell you something. In these two verses, God is saying, Sons, daughters, uh, young men, old men, servants, and handmaidens, I will pour out my spirit and they shall prophesy. Are you a son? Raise your hand. Are you a daughter? Raise your hand. Are you a servant of the Lord? Well, all of our hands. 
then, then get out there and start prophesying. Start with the dry bones that you have in your life and begin to prophesy. Now, first, first and foremost, let's understand what prophesying means biblically. That, the definition even of that word has been so just corrupted and, and uh, just misdefined over the years also. Prophesy, as it's used here and used in the Scripture, simply means this, to speak by divine inspiration. To speak by divine inspiration. You see, it's not nearly as mystical as so many have believed to prophesy and prophesying means. To speak by divine inspiration. I'm standing here today and some of what I'm doing before you today is a type of prophesying. It is. Speaking by divine inspiration. And, and I'm telling you, it is time for you to start prophesying to every dry bone in your life. To speak under divine inspiration of the Holy Spirit. The Apostle Paul says that every believer should be prophesying. In 1 Corinthians 14 verse 1, he says, As eagerly pursue and earnestly desire spiritual gifts, and especially, he places an emphasis, that you might prophesy. So church, I want, to break the, I want to break the myth over the ministry and the gift and the experience of prophesying. It's not just some mystical gift for some spiritually elite category of believer. Neither is prophesying fortune telling. Uh-huh. It is not fortune telling, however it is future telling. Please get the difference there. It is not fortune telling, it is future telling. As we're going to see in the, in the setting of the dry bones with Ezekiel. Okay, let's switch it over right now, Pastor Jamil. We've always got a backup. I'm going to switch it out. divine inspiration of the Holy Ghost. And according to Acts 2, we are all supposed to be doing that. It's another fruit or evidence of being filled with the Holy Spirit. You know what? I believe that even when you share your testimony of faith in Christ, your Jesus story, it is speaking that is divinely inspired by the Holy Ghost and you are prophesying to people. Ooh, are we good now? All right. I believe that. I believe that's a type of prophesying. Ezekiel was commanded to prophesy and tell those dry bones what God had to say to them. What his purpose was for their future. My friend, what in the world do you think the resurrection is all about? Something around here is dead. And Jesus said, I am here, and I am he who lives and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. I am the resurrection and the life. And though you were dead, yet shall you live. His resurrection power is in your prophesying. And that power can bring dry bones back to life again. Verse 5, Ezekiel, let's continue. Chapter 37, verse 5. Thus saith the Lord God unto these bones. Now Ezekiel is speaking. Behold, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. He's prophesying the word of the Lord to those dry bones. Ezekiel had to get God's word in his mouth and prophesy to those dry bones. Do you have a dry bone in your life today? If so, what is it? Is it a dry bone child? Is it a dry bone sibling or parent? Is it a dry bone relationship? Is it a dry bone offense? Is it a dry bone condition in your body? Is it a dry bone memory? Is it a dry bone belief? 
Is it a dry bone dream? Is it a dry bone regret? Let me say again then, it is time to prophesy to the dry bones in your life. Can these bones really live again? God is saying to each of us today, yes, they can. If you will open up your mouth and begin to prophesy to them. Begin to prophesy resurrection life to anything in your life that is dead, that has died. Stop wallowing in, the, in that. Stop trying to explain why. Stop trying to explain when. Stop trying to explain how. This is what the sovereign Lord says. I will put breath into you and you shall live. Start prophesying over that spiritually dead spouse. Start prophesying over that spiritually dead child. Start prophesying over that unhealthy body. Body. Start prophesying over that job application. Start prophesying over that broken relationship. Start prophesying over that dead vision. Start prophesying over every dead, dry bone in your life. This is what the sovereign Lord says. I will put breath into you and you shall live. Church, I hear the Lord saying, it is time to prophesy. Hallelujah. It's time to prophesy. I sure hope you understand the power of our God is not even limited by death, no matter when it died, how it died, where it died, or why it died. He is a God that can go beyond death to bring resurrection life again. Not even death can limit the power of our God. Not even a pandemic can limit the power of our God. Let me tell you something right now. There are no limits to our God. There are limits to the power of this pandemic. Let me say that again. There are limits to the pandemic, but there are no limits with the power of our God. Do you understand this? No desert can limit His water. Let me tell this crowd. I think some of them got it. No desert can limit His water. No famine can limit his food supply. No disease can limit his healing. No depression can limit God's peace. No rejection can limit his acceptance. No sin can limit God's forgiveness. No other power can limit his power. No darkness can limit his light. No lie can limit his truth. No other word can limit his word. No man-made law either can limit his perfect law. Uh, do you understand what is happening in America right now? I hope you do. Every political solution is failing. Every financial incentive is failing. Every social construct is also failing. Most every new policy coming out of Washington is failed policy even before it has a chance to be passed into law. Every man-made plan is falling to the ground in this nation. Every false god is being exposed as fraudulent and powerless. False prophets across the land are crying peace, peace, when there is no peace. Social media outlets are claiming to advance a liberated culture when they are really advancing a cancel culture. Political parties claim to care when all they are really doing is clamoring for control. The masters of masks and mandates continue to be exposed as complete liars. To many of our public institutions of higher learning are one by one selling their souls to the demon of political correctness. Everything that is woke is nothing but a big joke. I said everything that is woke is nothing but a big joke. I realize that all of these things are not pleasing to the Lord, but in my heart I believe, I still believe, that America is being made ripe for revival. 
America is ripe for the greatest harvest any generation has ever known. Because there's no limit to the mercy of our God. And he is not willing that any perish, but that all come to repentance. My friend, never overestimate the power of the devil. The power of the devil is limited, but the power of our God is unlimited. And begin to prophesy to the dry bones. Wipe your tears away. Stop crying over it. Stop trying to understand why. Stop trying to go back and change the history. Whatever the history of those dry bones was, that's what it is. God was not at all concerned how they got dry, why they were dry, how long they'd been dry. God was concerned with bringing them back to life. Hallelujah. That was his focus. Prophesy to the dry bones and you will release the unlimited power of Almighty God. That calls for a King James moment. I've had a few messages over the years that have so just been like foundational to me. And I believe to our congregation over the 30 years that we've existed. And these two verses, I built a message many, many years ago. And you know what? I, like I said, I've been visiting the Valley of Dry Bones. I've been visiting uh, the monuments and memorials of the past interventions of God and the past encounters of God in my life and in the life of this church. In Psalm 78, these Two verses. How often did they provoke? I'm sorry, three verses, starting in verse 40. How often did they provoke him, God, in the wilderness and grieve him in the desert? Yea, they turned back and tempted God and limited the Holy One of Israel. How often during this pandemic... Many of us have grieved God in this desert of COVID-19. And we have limited Him. How? The next verse says. They remembered not His hand, nor the day when He delivered them from the enemy. Church, may we not be a people provoking God in this pandemic and grieving Him during this plague. May we not turn away and tempt him and limit the Holy One of Israel. Let me just say right here, this is not a time to place limits on God. Take the limits off of your God. There is no pandemic that can limit the power of our God. There is no virus that can limit Him. There is no dry bone that can limit Him. Because God is not limited by the things that limit me. Hallelujah. How had they limited God? I just read it. We just read it. They didn't remember. They didn't remember the times he had delivered them. They didn't remember them in the past, how God had delivered them time and time again, the faithfulness of their God. They didn't keep the testimonies of his faithfulness alive in their hearts and minds and in the hearts and minds of the next generation, which we must be intentional to do. For we have a generation that knows not of the power and the faithfulness of our God unless we tell them of His faithfulness and of the power demonstrations of our God. And as we rehearse those things and are reminded, we release God's unlimited power in this hour that we so desperately, desperately need. Let me just say right here, stop rehearsing in your mind all the wrong memories which only strengthens regret and weakens your faith. But remember and rehearse in your mind and with your mouth all of the past encounters of God's faithfulness in your life. This is the key. This is the key to taking the limits off of God concerning the dry bones that may be in your life right now. God is saying to us today, tell those dry bones what I told you to tell them. Prophesy to them. Oh, church, stop evaluating dry bones. Stop explaining dry bones. Stop trying to define them. Stop labeling dry bones. Stop sympathizing with dry bones. Stop categorizing dry bones. Stop crying over them. Today is the day to open up your mouth and start prophesying to every dry bone in your life. Verse 6 of Ezekiel 37, And I will lay sinews upon you, and I will bring up flesh upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you shall live, and you shall know that I am the Lord. Hallelujah. 
If you begin to prophesy, speak under divine inspiration of the Holy Ghost to the dry bones. I believe God's power will begin to be released and he will demonstrate what he can do when you open up your mouth and prophesy under the unction and inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Pastor Jamil so powerfully reminded us Last Sunday, that true worship comes from a life of obedience to the Lord. This message is also about obedience, really. I believe God is reminding us today that it's time to prophesy to the dry bones. And we must obey that instruction just like Ezekiel did. And so verse 7, so I prophesied, Ezekiel saying, as I was commanded. And as I prophesied, there was a noise. <laughs> And behold, a shaking, and the bones came together bone to his bone. And when I beheld, lo, the sinews and the flesh came upon them, and the skin covered them above, but there was no breath in them. They were still dead. Change began to happen, but the life had not come yet. They were still dead. They were no longer dry bones. Now they were corpses. They had a form of godliness, a form of humanity, but the power was still denied. And if that's what, where you're at today, my friend, just as with Ezekiel, he had to prophesy and he had to continue to prophesy. He had to continue to prophesy until the life came. Verse 9, then God said to Ezekiel, prophesy unto the wind, prophesy son of man and say to the wind, thus saith the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain that they may live. I'm telling you, you've got to prophesy to the wind, the wind that represents the life-giving spirit, the life-giving breath of God, who is the Holy Spirit, the Ruach of God. Prophesy to the Holy Spirit. And Ezekiel said, so I did as God's commanded. I prophesied as he commanded in verse 10. And the breath came into them, and they lived and stood up on their feet, an exceeding great Army, Let me tell you, there is something so powerful that happens when we simply begin to obey. And I hear the Spirit saying, start prophesying to the dry bones in your life and don't stop prophesying to them until there's a noise and a shaking. But there's still no life. Keep prophesying. Ezekiel didn't just have to say one thing. He had to say several things. And we don't know. What we're not given is how long did this take? Did it take minutes? Did it take hours? Did it take days? We're not given a timeline. My friend, release all of that to God. Let the timing be in the heart and the hand of God. I do believe, though, if you'll begin to prophesy where you were worried, where you were upset, where you were uh, accommodating those bones, where you were trying to let them go and forget about it and turn away from it, if you'll begin to prophesy instead of all those things, I believe you will accelerate. You will see an acceleration of the release of the power of God into that dead bone situation, person, uh, or decision, whatever it is that is the dry bone in your life today. The whole thing started with Ezekiel opening up his mouth and it could not be finished any other way. Back in verse 9, we read it. Then he said unto me, God, now say this to those bones. And he didn't just prophesy one thing. He didn't just pray one prayer. He didn't just speak one word. You've got to prophesy and keep prophesying until you hear the sound of dry bones rattling. Hallelujah. And notice as he is speaking, prophesying the dead dry bones. In other words, he's preaching to a dead crowd. Now, that's not y'all. I'm not preaching to a dead crowd, but Ezekiel had to preach to a dead crowd. Verse 11. Then he said unto me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say, our bones are dried, our hope is lost, we are cut off for our parts. Wow. I don't know if you ever noticed that in this story. The dry bones had a voice. The dry bones began to speak back. Folks, I don't know what the dry bone is in your life, maybe more than one. 
For some, I believe the dry bone is probably a person, a lost one. They're crying out. You don't hear it, but God hears it. They're crying out because every dry bone has a voice, and God hears that voice. That obstacle before you, that mountain in your way, that pain in your body, that dry bone person, child, brother, mother, father, husband, wife, son, daughter, grandson, granddaughter, they have a voice. And God hears that, their voice today. It's time to prophesy. Whatever you do, don't let the dry bones do all the talking. Don't let the dry bones do all the talking. It's time to prophesy, speaking under divine inspiration of the Holy Spirit, and just watch what God will do. Verse 12, therefore prophesy and say unto them, how many times has God said this to Ezekiel? Because Ezekiel had to prophesy, and he had to keep on prophesying. Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, O my people, I will open your graves. Wow. And cause you to come up out of your graves and bring you into the land of Israel. And I will show, I shall, I mean, and you shall know that I am the Lord. When I have opened your graves, O my people, and brought you up out of your graves. And shall put my spirit in you, and you shall live, and I shall place you in your own land. Then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken it and performed it, saith the Lord. Let me tell you something, God is so much more ready to be exalted than you and I are ready to exalt Him. I said He is so much more ready to be glorified than you and I are ready to glorify Him. Jesus, why was the man born blind? Why was there a dry bone of blindness in His life? And they wanted Jesus to explain and give them all this theology and explain the history of that man's blindness and explain where it happened, when it happened, why it happened, who was involved, what are the reasons for it? And Jesus was not going to be drawn into that. Just as God made no mention of this in this situation with the dry bones, Jesus simply said, here's the reason there's a dry bone blind of blindness in his life. Here was the reason it was there. It was there so that the Father might be glorified. Hallelujah. Not in the blindness or God, or the Father would have left the man blind. He was glorified when his eyes were opened and and the miracle came, hallelujah. God is glorified in the miracle. He's glorified when his word goes forth through our lips and we prophesy to dead, dry bones. Now, my friend, there's nothing more impossible than that. There's no, more, no situation more impossible than a dead, dry bone. Like I said at the beginning of this message, it would have been just, you know, still just very significant if he brought him up and it was just a valley full of dead corpses. No, still, their bodies are all still intact. Well, it's easier for God to breathe life into a corpse than into dead, dry bones. No, it matters not with God because he is a God of unlimited power. God is not limited by the things that limit you and I. And as you begin to prophesy to your dry bones, I believe you're going to release the unlimited power of God. He's no longer going to be grieved by you because you're going to begin to prophesy. Again, where you were regretting, where you were upset, where you were sorrowful, where you were grieving over those dry bones, he's going to begin, you're going to begin to have the joy of the Lord restored to you as you begin to prophesy and that's going to change how you're praying over those dry bones that's going to change what you're saying over those dry bones and keep prophesying if you'll keep prophesying don't give up he was a sure thing yesterday that message just keeps coming back up in my spirit he's a sure thing today God is about ready to come he's about ready to be released into every dry bone that is in your life because he is so much more ready to be glorified and exalted than we are to glorify and exalt him. And I say, come Lord Jesus, come and be glorified even in my dry bone situation. I'm going to prophesy. I'm going to prophesy. It is time, I'm saying, for sons, daughters, servants, and handmaidens of the Lord to prophesy. It is time to prophesy to the dry bones and keep prophesying to them until life 
comes in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Let's stand up all over the room. Father, you're a God who cannot lie. Let every man be a liar, but let God be true. And Lord, I hear your spirit saying it's time to prophesy. Lord, it was a fruit. It was a work of the day of Pentecost, a work of the day of Pentecost. We just read it. Yes, there was tongues and demonstrations and power, but there was also, you said, the sons and daughters would prophesy. The apostle Paul said, yes, yeah, seek the gifts, seek, seek all the gifts, but he said especially he placed greater emphasis on prophesying. Lord, we take prophesying back. We recover it from the mystical, uh, misdefined and, and, and abused uh, way that it's been misused for way too long in much of the church. Lord, you've called me to speak under divine inspiration by the Holy Ghost. Lord, that means that from now on, my praise is a type of prophesying. My prayers are prophesying. When I share my testimony and my Jesus story, I'm prophesying. <laughs> Thank you for the power of prophesying. Holy Spirit, release that in us today. Lord, again, we're not going to let all the dry bones in our lives do all the talking anymore. We're going to prophesy Hear the word of the Lord. I'm going to put breath in you and you're going to live again. Holy Spirit, move. God didn't suggest Ezekiel say this. Father, you commanded him. We just read it. You commanded Ezekiel to prophesy. You didn't suggest or request it of him. You commanded him to prophesy. You were so ready to demonstrate your power and bring life to dry bones, but you had to have somebody else's mouth to speak and to prophesy under divine inspiration. Lord, I don't care how silly, how foolish it is to the natural mind. I'm going to prophesy to every dead, dry bone in my life, no matter what it is, no matter who it is, until I see the life of God restored. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. It's time to prophesy. It's time to prophesy. In Jesus' name we pray and believe together. Amen and amen. God bless you each one today.